My next guest, you all know, he's a very bright, funny, and talented actor. Um, I guess who came really to everybody's attention in Taxi. Um, he's also been in movies like One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, Jewel of the Nile, Wise Guys. His latest movie is called Ruthless People. Opens tomorrow. Danny DeVito. <laughs> Hey, big deal. Hey, well, look, I mean, it's uh, a long time coming here, you know. Hey, how are you? <laughs> great, great. We, I don't think we've ever met, otherwise than saying maybe a hello across a room yeah, or something. Yeah, I was in a dressing room or a makeup chair once. You popped your head in. Yeah. Hey, Dan, nice to see hey, you. Hey, good to see you. Hey. hey, I'm a big fan of yours. I really am. Good, yeah. You know, Taxi, of course, is still playing all over the country. And it's like one of those shows that, you, that holds up. It's like watching the, uh, the Lucy reruns or the, they hold up. They're still funny. I mean, oh, it was funny. a great experience. Funny's I mean, funny, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was like five of the best years of my life. Great ensemble. Yeah, right terrific, there. terrific. Yeah. Great people. You know, I saw something uh, that you did a couple of years ago that two friends of mine who write for this show, Mike Berry and Jim Mulholland, yeah. wrote a thing called The Ratings Game, which was on, I guess, HBO. Mm -hmm. Showtime. Uh, yeah, Showtime. It was about what happens inside of television and how you, the ratings yeah. could be rigged. Gee, that was funny. Outrageous. Funny. Yeah. With your wife, yeah. uh, Rhea. Rhea Perlman. Yeah, Rhea Perlman. Yeah, you're from Jersey. Asbury Park. Asbury Park. Yeah. Asbury Park. What was your first, uh, what you call, I guess, big break? You, you grew up, uh, your dad? Did my father, well, my father was kind of like an entrepreneur. He had, you know, he had a pool hall at one time, you know, in uh, the Crown Billiard Academy. And uh, then he had a, like, he had a little place that he sold, uh, sold dairy products. You know, he had a big sign out in front that said, uh, from our farm to you. <laughs> fresh we, farm. We didn't fresh. have a farm, but, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, you know, it was that kind of thing. Anything and, uh, farm fresh. Yeah. Well, you know, in Asbury Park, uh, you know, there were a lot of things going on, a lot of things to do. I was a gardener when I was there. You're uh, kidding. No, I, I, I cut grass in the summer, and then after high school, I, you know, I did other things. But, uh, you know, uh, I became a hairdresser. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, uh, no, I didn't know that. But uh, I was a. Uh, I worked for my sister. She had a beauty parlor. Did you go to one of the beauty school to learn yeah, this? Yeah, you know, Wilfred Academy, it was called. Oh, well, yeah, Wilf of course. Wilf I'm, you have that? I'm yeah. familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. and, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, you know, I was after high school. I didn't know. I didn't Wilfred know. Academy of Hairdressing, <laughs> That's right? That's it. Yeah, you know, you got your little case now, with little you, things in now, it, you know. Now, tell me this. Coming from Jersey, you know, the macho image you got Tough from guys, Jersey. And yeah. somebody says, hey, so, I'm going to go to the Wilfred School of Beauty. <laughs> How did you go up and tell your friends, hey, guys, well, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm Wilford going School. I'm going to Wilford School of Beauty. What do you want me to do? Hang around the pool all day? I'm going to go and learn a trade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus, Something you could depend well, on. But I, I got very good at it. Yeah, really? Well, yeah. Well, my sister, she had the beauty poly, Angela, you know. And I was Mr. Dan, you know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, no, I was it's always the first name. Is Mr. Dan? That's right. Mr. Dan, Mr. Daniel, Mr. whatever. <laughs> hey, you. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I got to, my specialty was like, this was early 60s, it's like, uh, you know, 61, 62 around, and, uh... I don't even know what was big then. Oh. And, uh, you know, my, my specialty was the beehive. <laughs> well, you know, people do the beehive, they just, uh, a lot of people want, never wanted it to come out. That was the thing, you put it in, you know, and people would stay for like weeks with this beehive. What's know? the secret to a well, good beehive? Actually, well, <laughs> Mr. Know, I was, Dan. I was very, I was well known. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like... What, we actually tested it once. We was on the cover of this uh, magazine down the shore. They had this thing called the Starlight Magazine. It was Spotlight Magazine. It was, uh, you know, all the things were going down on the shore in the summer. And they took uh, this woman that I had done a beehive. We brought it down to the jetty down at the, the shore. And we stuck around a 25-knot wind <laughs> to see if it would hold up. You Did know? it hold up? It held up. But, hey, you know, it was what an ad. What an ad. <laughs> Hey, yeah. you want to stand on the shore with a 25-knot wind? Come see Mr. Dan. I mean, that's a... That just means I got to... We're coming right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> we have finally returned. We're talking to former hairdresser to New Jersey's finest, Dan Heath. Really were a hairdresser. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, that was hot stuff. Now, what's, what's the... You, when you, you met your wife, Leah. Leah, yeah. Um, what's the first thing you did together? What's the first thing you auditioned well, for to get into the theater or whatever? Well, Rhea, Rhea and I were, we've been together for 15 years, and we worked, uh, you know, off, off Broadway. Right. Off, 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 off Broadway. Off, 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 off. 
Uh, first thing we ever did um, uh, professionally was uh, a play called uh, Vinyl, uh, Vinyl Visits and FM Station. It was, a, it was kind of like a very avant-garde play. It was in, it was, uh, I played Scum, and uh, Rhea played Cutter. And it was like, it was an S&M uh, uh, station in Hanoi or something. I don't know. It was very, Mary Warnoff was in it. It was a very, very interesting play. It was, in the, it was at the Theater for the Lost Continent. It was, uh, you know, on, on, on the West, you know where the West Side Highway is? Sure. West Street. That's just Jane. off Broadway. Just way down, yeah, just above Broadway. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was right down, I mean, it's like the bowels of Manhattan. It was adjacent to, the theater was adjacent to a, a flop house. It was 50 cents a yeah. bed and there were a lot of, a lot of guys, uh, the balcony, if you walked through the lobby of the theater, of the, of the flop house, a door opened up into the balcony of the theater. That was it. So during rehearsals, the guys would come out, drink some wine, watch us rehearse, comment. Yeah. It was terrible. You're I mean, talking was, show business here. This is show business. <laughs> previews, in the, during the previews, a guy uh, was a terrible, a guy walked through the thing, the show was like, we had half a house. He didn't like the show. He relieved himself off the balcony. I swear to God, it was a terrible. That's a bad critic. Bad it was critic. A, one of my. It was a better review for the show, though. I think. It was yeah. One of the better. So, somebody said you used to do what they call street theater. Is that what the street kids you doing in San Francisco? Well, we didn't call it. Stuff? We didn't call it street theater at the time, and we didn't. We was just horsing around. It was yeah. like guys just, you know, doing anything. We uh, like we, my father had a pool hall on Asbury Avenue, and uh, next to the pool hall was a, uh, a Carvel soft ice cream uh, thing and it was this summer and we were all in there we wanted to get a rise out of the people so we had a starter pistol it was a terrible thing but uh, we we had a fight in the pool hall mock fight you know four or five guys yelling throwing bottles and we came out into the street russell shot louis he fell into the street sal came around the corner his father's black buick we threw him in the trunk we drove off the people at the carvel are like uh, what? just hanging you know, dripping ice cream over their shoes great training ground yeah it was a terrible prank. Do you still keep in touch with some of these guys? Oh, yeah, the boy, the guys from Jersey, all my friends, they, sometimes they show up at the, you know, they come to, like, they come, to, like, Ruthless People, we have a little premiere. Yeah. They come to the thing, Jewel of the Nile, they came to see it. And theater is a tough place to have the guys come yeah. because they, they, they holler at you, you know, and say, hey, Dan, how's it going? You know, it's like, hey, remember Carvel's? Hey. <laughs> That's funny. Now, in Ruthless People, we're going to show, uh, we have a, a, a film clip, and it probably needs a little uh, explanation of what we're going to see. Well, the, the story is basically uh, a man named Sam Stone, who uh, has been married to, is Bette Midler. If I, I've been married to Bette Midler 15 years. I can't stand, you know, I mean, it's just horrible. I'm set, and now I'm, I'm going to kill her, and this sets it up, you know. <laughs> see the clip. I think I'm going to like this. There's a, there's a disturbed husband. Yeah. You're talking... That, uh, Who's the gal in the scene? The woman, the woman in the clip there uh, plays my mistress, Anita Morris, and she is hot. Yeah, she's been on the show a number of times. Yeah. That's a disturbed husband in that picture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You've been married now how long? We've been married four years. We've been, uh, we've been living, we lived together for 11 before we got married, and, uh, you know. That's uh, a long uh, engagement. That was like guys and dolls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was oh, like, yeah. Uh, but it was, uh, it was good. And then we have two children now, Lucy and Gracie. There's hi, always, Lucy. Hi, Gracie. Yeah. There's always that cliche about people who are in the business. It's difficult because of the scheduling and so forth. Yeah. But you work together. We try to work too. it out, you know, as, as best we can. Like, uh, you know, in terms of the schedules and whenever I'm on location, if, if Rhea's not doing cheers, then, you know, she brings the kids and we, yeah, we hang out. Yeah. When you did Jewel and I, you went, spent some time in Morocco. Oh, yeah. 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 And you sat around there. Somebody told me, you, what's the joke? You oh, told somebody? Well, it's like, well, you see... Not I a work, lot of comics work Morocco. Generally. No, it's, it's a... I work... Well, actually, what I, I came from Wise Guys, and I was two months in a, in a, every morning in the makeup trailer, Lou Albano would tell this joke. Guy goes in a psychiatrist's office. He says to the doctor, Doc, all night I'm dreaming about wigwams and teepees. Right? And the doctor says to him, I know your problem. You're too tense. Okay, so for, for two months... Right? Okay. Two months... <laughs> Two months. I deserved it. I understand. I'm okay. hearing this joke. So now I'm like, you know, it's in my head. I'm, I can't. Every place I go, I'm telling this joke. Two weeks after we finished Wise Guys, we're, the whole family were on a plane to Morocco. First, I see Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner for lunch, and they just they greet us at the hotel. First thing I do, I'm a basket case. Eight hours on a plane with two babies. Hey, Mike, did you hear the joke about the, the guy who goes in the psychiatrist's office? I, I'm, I'm telling everybody this joke, and everybody's going... Oh, you know, this guy's going to be in the movie, you know, and this, that, and you know. So we get to Warzazat, 
which is in the Sahara Desert. The governor of Warzazat and, and nine people, his entourage, come in to sit with us for tea one evening. You know, they, they wear the long robes and, you know, just the, their legs out and, and, and little tiny shoes, no socks, right? He- fezzes on their heads and towels and things. And, and, and they don't speak English. They speak Arabic and French. I don't speak, I speak Jersey. I don't speak Arabic, French, Jersey, whatever. Now, Michael and Kathleen, you know, they get along with French a little. Michael Douglas, he's talking French. The guys, I'm sitting there like, hmm. So they had a translator. So in the middle of the, there was a little lull in the conversation. Don't, don't tell me. I said to the translator, ask the governor if he heard this joke. <laughs> right? I tell him the joke. The guy's going, I'm going, the guy walks in the side, guy, <laughs> gets the wigwams and teepees. <laughs> Two tents. Long, thing, long punchline. I said, guy goes, Whoa! <laughs> his feet go up in the air. I see up his dress. It was like, it was outrageous, man. The guy goes nuts. Tell him. You either had a great translator or the, their star for humor Absolutely. over there. Absolutely. <laughs> Two cents, huh? I think you're right. Got the governor. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Doc is going to cook. 